All right, welcome everyone. Hope everyone is doing well. It's a Saturday morning for me here in the United States. Hope everything is going well wherever you are. In today's English lesson, we are going to talk about terms, English phrasal verbs, and sayings native English speakers will use when talking about peace. And I am going to keep politics out of this lesson because I know my country, the United States, has not exactly been great at keeping peace in the world. So we are going to talk about terms that we might use with peace when it comes to war, but we might also talk about when just two friends are fighting. Before we get into that uh, English lesson today, I do want to welcome a new channel member, Regis. He joined. I don't think it's still up on the stream, but at some point yesterday, he decided to become a member. So I got a little something for him, and it goes a little something like this. New member. Make sure you check the members tab for the Discord, the members chat, and the bonus videos. Yeah, we got a Discord server, private Discord server. We chat there daily and something new for gold members it's called volley we can send videos back and forth i'd also like to say hi to a couple people hansa hansa's in the house i saw audi here welcome freddie france is in the house sam the taiwanese welcome anya germany is represented and there, look at that new channel member there regis i look forward to getting to know you Look at that. Snuffy's here. Welcome, Snuffy. And of course, friend of the show, Aroni. Aroni. Welcome. Oh, and Luke, Poland. Poland is here. So nice to see uh, some familiar faces and then uh, a couple new ones. This might be your first time, Snuffy. If it is, welcome. And if you haven't uh, liked the video, you can do that and other people will be able to find the chat yeah thumbs up thumbs up all right let's get into that lesson here i got some slides for you there's a slide and there's the first word and it's ceasefire ceasefire so let's break that word down i don't want to get rid of that let's break that word down two parts cease and fire cease is a very formal way to say stop. So let's pretend someone is playing loud music in the next room. I could say cease that noise. It's a little too formal. I would probably say stop that noise or stop that racket. It's another way to talk about noise. So cease, very formal way to say stop. Fire is another way to say shoot when we're talking about a gun. You could say she shot the gun or you could say she fired the gun. So a ceasefire is literally a stop in the fighting. And we do probably only use this with war. We wouldn't say two friends who are fighting have had a ceasefire. We'll talk about something else. But the important part about ceasefire, it means that peace has not been reached yet, but there is a stoppage in the fighting for some reason. Maybe the two armies need more supplies. Maybe they need more gasoline. Maybe they need more food. Or maybe the two armies want to have peace talks. Now, that's not one of my words that I'd like to teach you today, but peace talks is exactly what it sounds like, talking about peace. And I do have a sentence for you if you would like to practice some shadowing or at least see the word in a sentence. And if you're not familiar with what shadowing is, it's when I say the sentence and then you say it after me. 
or you try to say it right along with me. And it's helpful if you want to pause or if you're watching on replay, shout out to anyone watching on replay or the podcast. Welcome. The two armies agreed to a ceasefire that would last for one week. The two armies agreed to a ceasefire that would last for one week. So hopefully a ceasefire means peace is followed right after that. Doesn't always happen. Sometimes there's more fighting, but ceasefire. Let me check the chat. Make sure there are no questions about ceasefire. It's a pretty straightforward word, meaning it sounds exactly, or it is exactly what it sounds like. Unfortunately, those two words, cease and fire, aren't always used in the exact way. Look at that. Columbia's in the house. Roger, welcome. France, Danny, how are you? Weola. Glad to see you in here. Hey, Ibrahim, I will mention Egypt a little bit later on in the lesson. Welcome. All right, I will check the chat. Fatima, how are you? Brazil's here. All right, if there are no questions about ceasefire, let's move on to the next one. Negotiations. Not easy to say. Negotiations. Negotiations. This is when two sides get together and try to work out an agreement work out there is a phrasal verb not like work out going to the gym work out meaning going back and forth i'll take this you get that if there is a couple who is going through a divorce they might have negotiations all right, I'm going to take the house, you take the car and the dog. There's probably lawyers involved. But when peace is happening and the war is about to end, two sides will get together and say, for there to be peace, I need this. The other side might say, well, that's fine, but I need this. And that's negotiations. Each side usually gets a little something, but they also give up a little something. Negotiations. Let's take a look at uh, a couple sentences with negotiations. The verb, by the way, is to negotiate. Negotiate. The negotiations to end the war lasted for days. Okay, there's one sentence for you with negotiations. The negotiations to end the war lasted for days. And look at the spelling of for there. It's not like this. It's not for, F-O-U-R. It lasted for days. We don't know exactly how many days, just probably more than one, probably more than two. Four days when I hear that in English, it makes me think maybe not quite a week, not quite seven days because they probably would have said a week, but maybe four, five, six days. The next sentence, negotiations usually involve both sides having to agree to give up or lose something. So give up might be a tricky English phrasal verb for you. And in this way, it means to lose something. So at the beginning of the year, I gave up sugar. I didn't really. I like sugar too much. But some people might say, hey, I'm going to give up sugar. Give up. Or cut out. Cut out. I'll talk about cut out in um, a future English lesson on the channel this week. There are a few, few things happening in the chat. So let me check it out and make sure. Okay. Okay. This is a great question. Fayez, 
always has great questions. Can we use haggle, bargain, instead of negotiate? Okay, when I hear the verb haggle, I think of things not as important. So you might go to the market and you might haggle with a vendor, somebody selling something. Maybe you want to get a shirt. They are saying, hey, you can have this shirt for five dollars they might and you might say no i would like it for four dollars and so you come to an agreement at 450 four dollars and fifty cents so something like that haggle is a little less formal negotiations like i said probably lawyers are involved multiple people are involved it takes a while haggle very quick probably minutes same with bargain, probably. Bargain probably has a little bit of a better connotation. Haggle might have a little bit of a negative connotation. Great question. Great question. Looking through the chat just to make sure. Nah, Sam. Sam's always saying his English isn't great. Sam's English is good. I've talked to him a few months ago so i bet it's even better all right hopefully oh look at that blissful mommy have you seen my slides they've been spying on me we will talk about bury the hatchet very soon very soon nice job hey, harry you're right on time well wow 11 minutes this this lesson has been going on 11 minutes harry you're fine. You only missed two. You only missed two of them. The next one is truce. Truce. This is a good one because it means that the fighting is over. Um, maybe not everything, maybe not all of the negotiations have happened, but if two sides have come to a truce, probably means there is a ceasefire in place, so fighting has stopped. Both sides may need to come to the table. That's another phrase we use when people are talking peace. Both sides may need to come to the table, but it's a good sign. Truce means peace is close. A truce is when neither side really wins they just both agree to stop fighting so negotiations may happen after um they may never happen <laughs> i said i wasn't gonna get political um but in history anybody watching from korea hope you're all doing well but i believe the war between the united states and korea never officially ended but for the last 60 years we've had a truce so there's been no fighting but you know just there wasn't a formal peace agreement i don't think there were formal peace talks but a truce is good now you may have a truce in just regular everyday life she and her enemy agreed to a truce they promised they would never speak to each other again. So they didn't end on the best of terms. They're not going to be friends again. They've just agreed to disagree. They've agreed never to speak to each other again. The good news is they're not fighting though. So the truce, it's good. It's not as good as complete peace but at least there's no fighting. You know? Maybe they don't leave exactly happy, but no fighting. Hopefully that, hey, Miho is here. Hope all is well in Japan. Look through the chat just to make sure. Malami, how are you? Jamie Watson is in here. That's my wife. All right. 
Win-win. I did not talk about that in this English lesson, but we could talk about it right now. Abraham, good one. Win-win. It means both sides get something. It's a win-win situation. We often say it like that. Let's see here. I'll talk about uh, my wife and I are planning to go to the beach sometime soon. Okay. I don't exactly like walking on the beach when it's cold. I would rather swim. Too cold to swim now. But my wife, Jamie, likes to walk on the beach. And at the beach, they sell really good french fries. So even though I don't like going to the beach, I'm going to get some fries. My wife, she loves walking on the beach, even if she can't swim in the water. So we're both going to go to the beach and we're both going to get something we like. It's, it's a win-win. I get the french fries. She gets the nice walk on the beach. I do, I, I do like going to the beach. I was just using that as an example. Hello, how are you? I wish I could read that writing. I have been learning Russian for the last uh, two years, but I don't know much in Russian. All right. The next one. Bury the hatchet. Bury the hatchet. This means that there is peace. There is peace. Now, that picture right there, it is a hatchet. It is a hatchet. Um, we might also call it an axe. Um, an axe is a little bit bigger than a hatchet usually. And you can use it for cutting wood. Now, we don't want anyone to bury the hatchet in somebody's back. That would be violent. That wouldn't be very peaceful. When we talk about bury the hatchet, it means there is no more fighting. This is usually not as formal. We probably wouldn't use this with countries who are at war. We would probably use this with friends. Speaking of friends, look at that. What a great message. What a great message. How can you disagree with that? Praying for world peace. My friend from the Philippines who now lives in Qatar, that's perfect. I could not have said it any better myself. Got a little something for you. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat. Angelo, thank you so much. It does mean a lot and great message. Great message. So bury the hatchet. That is the hatchet. If you look at that picture on the left, it looks like a piece of wood and it looks like the hatchet is being buried into it. When you bury something, you pretty much put it underground. You put it underground. A dog might bury his or her bone. But when we talk about peace here, burying the hatchet is another way to say they made up. That's an English phrasal verb there. They made up. It's better than a truce because there are no bad feelings after. So you could say to a person who you were once fighting with, oh, we buried the hatchet. Yeah, you know, we're all good now. No more fighting. A truce just means, well, well, we're not speaking to each other, but we're not fighting. So if you're talking about a friend and you have buried the hatchet, that's, that's a pretty good thing right there. Pretty good thing. Anything else? Looking through the chat. Any questions? I'm sorry. Wedding video. In Ukraine, stay safe, my friends. Stay safe. Fayez. I encountered two words that is related to enemy. 
Those are foe and adversary. I don't know if there is any difference. No, I would say foe and adversary can be used as synonyms. I don't think one is stronger than the other. Adversary might be a little bit more formal, but they both mean someone you are fighting with. Foe, adversary. All right. Ooh, it's a good one right here. Um, when we're talking about peace, to give up and to give in. Um, they are very close to the same, but they're not the same. Um, you would have to have two people fighting. Let's see. I'm trying to think of a good situation. Give up. It doesn't have to be fighting, but since we're talking about peace, um, <laughs> they're very, very close. Um, so let's, I'm trying to come up with an example. Let's say my wife and I, Jamie, again, we're going to pick something that is not too bad. Let's say we are fighting about where we want to go to eat. Okay. Um, I've used this before. Let's say I want Italian and I want to get some pasta and she wants some Mexican. She wants tacos and we're both going out to eat together. Of course, I could go alone and get my Italian and she could get her Mexican. But let's say we're both trying to go out to eat together and we both want what we want. I could just give up. All right. All right. Well, let's go to Mexican. You know, when you give up, it means you stop fighting, but it doesn't mean you're happy. Doesn't mean you're happy. You could be so beaten that you just have to give up. Give in is a little bit better. You know, you're trying to make the other person happy. So I might give in and get Mexican with Jamie and say, okay, fine. All right. All right. You win. Let's go get Mexican. I can get some tacos. If I give in, there's a chance that I'm still happy. If I give up, we often throw our hands in the air. Ah, give up. This is a picture of a person giving up. Given, it's a little bit better, I guess, but all right. Ariana from Ukraine, I hope all is well. Yeah, Hunza, hatchet is usually a little bit smaller than an axe, but they both have the same shape. They both have the same shape. Yes, blissful mommy. Surrender is another way to say give up, right? Surrender. Nicely done. Oh, I read it right though, but okay. There's the correction there. Give up. Let's get back to, do we have any more with bear the hatchet? I think that's it. Now the next one, you might extend an olive branch. You might extend an olive branch. And that is a nice way to say you are going to stop the fight. Extend an olive branch. Now, I mentioned earlier to Ibrahim, this originally comes from Egypt, I believe. And you'll often hear this in Greek mythology. The olive branch represents peace. Represents peace. So let's say Jamie and I are fighting about where we want to go out and eat. I might extend the olive branch and say, you know what? Let's just go get Mexican. Let's just go get Mexican. A lot of times, though, when you extend an olive branch, the fighting, it's, it's a little bit, the stakes are a little higher. It's a little bit more serious. Okay. So maybe two friends are, oh, neighbors. Let's talk about neighbors. In the United States, neighbors might fight people who live next to you. Let's say one of my neighbors was playing really loud music, okay? And I was upset with them. And this had been happening for weeks. Like, why? I'm trying to sleep. Why are you playing music so loud? We start fighting. To extend the olive branch, I might 
make them a cake. Say, hey, I'm, you know, I'm sorry we've been fighting so much. I won't mention the music. Here, you know, I'd like to extend the olive branch here. Take a cake. Doesn't everybody like cake? So extending an olive branch means you are trying to make peace with the other person. And you probably wouldn't actually say that to the person. Hey, here, I'm extending an olive branch. Take this cake. That's what we talk about with trying to start peace. Like it's, it's better than giving up. It's better than giving up because you are making an effort to still have peace with that person. I have something here. Extending an olive branch is when one side does a nice act towards peace. They say to the other side, hey, let's stop fighting. So you might have an enemy, but at least you want to be nice and come to some kind of an agreement. Maybe you have a truce. Extending the olive branch is the first step towards peace. Any questions on that? Yeah, I did not. I don't think I have the white flag as a symbol of surrender or giving up. But I'm glad you said that. Raise the white flag equal to give up. Yeah, pretty much. Yes, we do use it in colloquial speech. We sure do. Yeah, Um, mostly with people my age or older. I don't think younger people use raise the white flag, but you might hear that. It's um, sometimes it can be used when you're trying to be funny. Like, oh yeah, I threw up the white, you could say threw up as well. I threw up the white flag last night. I didn't want to fight with my wife anymore. I just surrendered. I gave up. Raise the right white flag. Yeah, good one. Good one. Um hand out the olive branch oh okay so that's the way you say it in turkish i'm going to try to say hello in turkish but uh i think i always say it wrong hey and also since we're in that part of the world turkey just a little north is iran and i believe it's persian new year tomorrow so i hope if anybody is watching from iran Or if you celebrate Persian New Year, hope it's a good one. Turkey. Um, I was looking at flights to Turkey this week. Just curious. I can't afford to go. It's uh, quite expensive, but I would love to visit Cappadocia one day to see the hot air balloons. I hope I'm saying it correctly. It was about $1,200 to get to Cappadocia. Cappadocia, Cappadocia, a little bit expensive. Yeah, we usually use that extend. And when you're talking about um, extending, hang on, I can show you extend. I have this right here. I, uh, I have a tripod. This is a tripod, but I could extend it. When you extend it, you just like pull it out a little bit more you extend so to shake somebody's hand you could extend your hand to shake it but we all we we almost always use that verb with it you extend the olive branch yeah i would stick with that but or you can just say hey i'm trying to make nice i'm trying to be nice i'm extending the olive branch here work with me all right. The next one. Gotta pick, um, we got that. Extend the olive. Oh, next one. Treaty. A treaty. This is very formal. A treaty is here. And that you can see in the picture, there is a book and there is a pen. Usually it takes a lot of time to come up with a treaty. Usually negotiations happen first remember that one negotiations happen first and a treaty is something very formal both sides will agree to give up things 
to get things. Sometimes an exchange of land. One army that wins might get a little bit more land. Things like that. A treaty. It's usually a piece of paper telling what side is doing to give up or get to stop the fight. So both sides have to agree. Well, unless one, and we don't usually use this with friends. This is very formal, usually used with armies at war. A treaty. Yep. It's a very formal agreement. Treaty. And uh, in history, at least the history that I have studied, so many peace agreements or treaties have been signed in Paris. Yeah, they often will say the Treaty of Paris, and then they will give the year after it. The Treaty of Paris. Pact. It's very, it's very similar to a treaty. A pact might happen when there is no war. So you could, a country could have a pact with another country and it could be all about money. It could be trade. Um, maybe let's say the United States and, and Canada, we have a trade pact. I'm making this up, but um, Canada sends us wood. We send them gasoline. You know, each country might get a little deal. So um, a pact could be a little bit bigger than just war. So it's a very formal agreement. So not exactly equal. I wouldn't say. I think a pact could be used in more ways. Treaty, usually just to end war. Yeah, for the most part. Yeah, They're very similar though. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and I do, I do feel badly about the Turkish lira. It has been uh, not doing so well. It's not like any currency in the world is doing well now. The dollar is losing its um, value. NATO was a treaty. Yeah, it was an agreement with, what, 30 countries or so? White flag means to give up. Red flag? I don't know. Red flag is never give up. That is not very common in the United States, if that is a thing, I've never heard of that. No, the red flag. Sorry, not not in the United States, at least. Not in English. All right. Hey, there you go. Oh, oh okay. I don't know how to say that word. Navruz. But should I say Navruz Mubarak? Maybe? For Happy New Year? I don't know. I don't know. But anybody who is celebrating anything, I hope it goes well. The next one, amnesty. Amnesty. This is a very tricky one here. Amnesty. Amnesty is safety from something that could harm you. Okay. So somebody could seek amnesty. They could move to another country and try to seek amnesty. Maybe they would be in trouble in one country, but if they go to another country, they will be safe. And that would be what they would be seeking, amnesty. Amnesty. That is when you are trying to probably avoid something bad. So maybe in one country, it's illegal in another country, it's not illegal. So you will seek amnesty in that country. You can also seek amnesty with your taxes, at least in the United States. So taxes are when you have to pay the government money. And maybe for some reason you can't pay that money, you could ask for amnesty for your taxes. That means you don't have to pay them. Very, very rare. There is a organization that in English we call Amnesty International. And that is a group that tries to help people in countries 
and they're in trouble for doing things that at least Amnesty International doesn't think they should be in trouble for. They try to look out for people in other countries. Amnesty International. The next one. Hang on. Got one more with Amnesty. Refugee. I talked about refugee in the English lesson I did for war a couple weeks ago. And so a refugee is someone who is leaving a country because of war. So the refugee requested amnesty to enter the country. So maybe they don't have the proper visas. Maybe they don't have the proper passport. Maybe they don't have the proper papers. And they're just saying, please, I need help here. I'm seeking amnesty. I'm requesting amnesty. For a while, don't want to get too political here again, but in the United States, people from Cuba could go to the United States and they would almost always be granted amnesty because the United States and Cuba, they didn't get along so well. Take a quick drink. Um, I think relations between Cuba and the United States are getting better. But a lot of times, Cu Cubans would flee Cuba and try to reach the United States. And if they did, they would almost always be granted amnesty. They would be allowed to enter the country even though they didn't have the proper documents. Let's check the chat. Make sure there are no questions. Okay. Anya knows the group Amnesty International. Oh, and it's pronounced, so I know a little German. If I say Amnesty International, people in Germany will know what I mean. Perfect. Oh, no, I can't see that flag. What is it? Is that Poland? I'm a big fan of flags. No, that's not Poland. Oh, no, I don't know that one. That's not Turkey. I'm sorry, Gabriel. I don't know. I'm sorry, Gabriel, but welcome. Welcome. All right. Just checking the chat here. Oh. Red and white. Hmm. Yeah. What is that? Okay. I see people guessing red and white. Yeah. It could be definitely Poland, right? Could be Poland. Um, could be Belarus is red and green. I know that. I'm a big fan of flat. Oh, Indonesia. Very close. Yeah, what is that? That's Poland. I know. Ara, Ara is Poland. Yeah. Hey, did you? I would love to. Hey, I would love to know. I'm always curious. Uh, what country are you from? Yeah, if you don't mind, can you put the uh, little emoji in the chat? Yeah. What country are you from? Put the little flag emoji and people can guess. And we can see how many people, um, what countries are represented in this chat. And some countries, the governments might not get along, but that doesn't mean the people have to fight. So perfect. I'd love to see some of those countries that are represented here. Some I know. Okay, we definitely have a vote for Poland. Yeah, that is definitely Poland. Ara is definitely from Poland. Now, Indonesia, is that when the red is on top and the white is on the bottom? I don't know. All right. Okay. New Year. Hey, who doesn't love a party, right? I hope everything goes well. Um, no, Blissful Mommy. No, I do not have political asylum on here, but it is a lot like amnesty so political asylum that means and i don't want to get political here um if your country has something illegal um let's say you spoke out against the government okay you said things about the government that were true but the government didn't like it and they might put you in jail and when you get out of jail 
you might have a really hard time living life. You could seek political asylum in another country and they might take you in. It's, it's hard to explain some of these things in kind of simpler English because these are some pretty heavy topics, but I hope that helps political asylum, asylum and amnesty are probably synonyms. They can probably be used interchangeably, at least for normal everyday people like me. If you work with the government and you're talking about amnesty and asylum, be careful because they could be slightly different, but to the average everyday person, they sound like the same to me. All right. But well, Lereshenko, yeah, he's not very popular in, in some parts of the world. That is Poland, right? That is, I know. See, I can cheat with uh, Angelo because I know where he's from. And he's from Qatar. And some people say you should not say Qatar. You should say Qatar. Hmm. All right, the next one. We are learning about peace today. If you're just joining us, these are English terms, sayings, phrases, native English speakers use when they talk about peace. The next one here, let me pull this up. We did amnesty. So let's talk about let up. Let up. This is a phrasal verb you will hear. It does not have to be just with war, but let's say there is a lot of fighting. There's a lot of bombing. If there is a let up, it can be used as a noun. If there is a let up, it means it has stopped or it has not been as bad. There has been a let up in the fighting. The fighting has let up a little bit. Yes, I know where Ibrahim is from. So let's talk about let up in a sentence. There was a let up in the fighting. There it's being used as a noun. There was a let up in the fighting. But you could also use it with weather. The rain let up just long enough for us to cross the street without getting wet. So in that second sentence, it's used as a phrasal verb. The rain let up just long enough for us to cross the street without getting wet. So it's lull. If you've ever heard lull, don't think, yeah, that's not my, I don't think I have lull. Oh, I do have lull. So the next three mean almost the same thing. It means there was something big or intense, then not as intense. And then it got intense again. So a lull, a let up, a breather, we're going to talk about in just a minute, means a little bit of a rest in between two things that were pretty intense. You can talk about rain, talk about snow, you can talk about wind, you can talk about fighting. Let's practice shadowing with this sentence alone. The rain let up just long enough for us to cross the street without getting wet. The rain let up just long enough for us to cross the street without getting wet. Let up. Hope that helps. The next one, really close, really close. It's another way to say rest. A breather. So you could take a rest when you're fighting. You could call it a breather. The army needed a breather to collect itself. But you could also use a breather when you're working out or doing work. So if you see the woman on the right, it does look like she has been working out. And it looks like she's taken a breather. She's taking a little rest. She is trying to get her breath back. She might have been breathing heavy before, 
If you're breathing heavy, it might sound like this. When you're working really hard or you're working out, that might be how you sound. So you take a breather. You take a rest to get your breath back. And this person over here looks like he's maybe shoveling hay. I don't know. Probably working with some cows, it looks like. And it looks like he's taking a breather. Maybe he worked really hard in the morning. He's going to take a breather right around lunchtime. He's going to take a little break. So I thought that might be a new term for you, a breather. But we use it quite a bit here in the United States. Let's check. Hey, how are you? Welcome. Oh, seat is here. It's okay. Just a little late. We have been doing this for uh, 45 minutes. Hope you all are learning some good English here. I hope your English is getting better. Apple the Frog, always good to see you in here. You're going to take a breather after class? Ah, I, I Maybe. This does not seem like work to me, though. This is fun. I enjoy seeing everybody in the chat. I enjoy thinking I might be helping your English. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I, don't, I might work on another English lesson, actually, for next week. I think I'm working on uh, books, terms we use with books. So I might keep working. I don't know. But hey, when you're working, when you're working and you're doing something you love, it doesn't feel like work, right? All right, the next one. Did we do a sentence? We didn't do a sentence with breather. Hang on. Let's do this. She took a breather. During her morning workout, she took a breather during her morning workout. Let's talk about it when a couple might be fighting. He and his girlfriend were starting to fight a lot, so they decided to take a breather. This is, um, if anybody is a Friends fan, this TV show Friends Ross and Rachel, they were on a break for a little while. Apparently, apparently Ross, Ross probably shouldn't have had a girlfriend while he was taking a break from Rachel. But another way to say to take a break is we're going to take a breather for a little while. So it might, they might not get back together, that couple, when they're taking a breather. So hopefully that helps with a breather. The next one, a lull. It is a lot like a let up, a lull. So if there has been a lot of fighting, a lot of bombing, and then it stops for a little while, you can call it a lull. Sometimes, <clears throat> excuse me, I do have a cough button. I have a button I can push when I need to cough. So you can't hear it. But the last time I did that, the microphone cut out, cut out. Another way to say it stopped working, phrasal verbs. So also a lull could be when something gets boring. And I have this example of when a movie might get boring and something you could do during it. So let's pretend you have gone to the theater to watch a movie. There was a lull in the movie, so it seemed the perfect time to visit the bathroom. There was a lull in the movie, so it seemed the perfect time to visit the bathroom. You might also hear a lull in the action. There was a lull in the action. Could be like um, maybe a sporting event, maybe a, a football game. And if there is a lull in the action... Just kind of maybe gets a little boring, not as exciting as it once was. The next one I'd like to teach you is stalemate. Stalemate. This is when two sides have been competing or they've been at war and neither side can win. This comes from the game of chess in English. Chess. That game on the left there, I 
can hide my face. In English, we call that game chess. And sometimes neither side can win. Neither side can get a checkmate. So we might say they've come to a stalemate. Stalemate. Neither side can win. And if you look at these two animals here, geez, I don't know what we would call those animals. Are they elk? It could be elk. There's some sort of cow, some sort of bull. And it looks like they're fighting, but maybe they're taking a breather. Neither one can win, so they've come to a stalemate. Hope that helps. Stalemate. I'm sure I have a sentence here. Stalemate. It's a short one. The chess game ended in a stalemate. The chess game ended in a stalemate. Hopefully that helps. All right, just checking the chat. Ooh, hey. Malami, that's a great one. The lull before the storm. We sometimes say the calm before the storm. So the lull before the storm, it means you know it, it could be a storm. It could be a lot of rain and a lot of wind. Or it just could be something very intense. It's like the calm before the storm. Maybe something bad is going to happen. I teach school. Some of you may know. I have a classroom. And in my classroom, there are about 20 students. And right before class begins, when the buses come and drop off the students, I might say, whoop, here's the lull before the storm. Here's the calm before the storm. It's peaceful in my classroom. Peaceful is the adjective we use when describing something that has peace. It's peaceful. Oh, yesterday morning, the sunrise was beautiful. I had to get out of my car and take a picture. I put it on the um, community tab of this uh, channel. It was just so peaceful. So peaceful out there. The lull before the storm. The next one. There's no real sentence here. This is just in English. And maybe this is international. At least in the United States, I should say. We have two signs of peace. And they look like that. Two signs of peace. There's like the literal peace sign on the left. And then the peace sign you can do with your, your fingers. I don't think I have a sentence for that. Just that's what we call. It. If somebody says uh, P sign, it could be one of those two things. P sign. I don't know. Is that is that all around the world? I know some hand gestures. You got to be careful about hand gestures around the world. But in the United States, this means peace. This means peace. Hopefully, in your country too. I don't want to go to a different country and hey, peace. And it actually means something really bad. Because in England, if you do something like this, it's really bad. In the United States, it doesn't really mean anything. And both countries speak English. That's bad. Don't do that in England. If you come to the United States, yeah, you can do it all day. People might think you're a little strange if you just do that all day. But you could. It's not a bad thing. All right. Peace sign is the next one. Now, after peace sign, though, we got this one. Passivist. Might be difficult to say passivist. You can see this person on the left is extending an olive branch. You can see the person on the right is probably saying that they don't want war. I can imagine. A pacifist is someone who doesn't want war. They believe in peace. She was a pacifist. She was totally against the idea of war. Pacifist. That is what a pacifist is. They are someone who is totally against war. Unfortunately, you know, I wish there was no war in the world, but, uh, Humans can be greedy, right? Humans can be greedy. That's a lot of 
what wars are about. Yeah, I do believe so, Marina. We had a president at one time. His name was Richard Nixon. And he sometimes did that for peace or it could be V for victory. Absolutely. Absolutely, Marina. Absolutely. Oh, gosh. It's not pretty how I handle a noisy class. Um, at the beginning of the year, I have to be pretty strict. I have to raise my voice. I might have to yell a little bit like, hey, show my angry eyes. Hey. But at, in this time of the year, though, I just have to look at a student, you know, that we know each other well enough. Like, I've just come on, cut it out. You know, I, I try to do it quietly. So my classes are great. It takes a little while at the beginning of the year to show students like, hey, this is not a teacher you want to mess with. You have to show students at the beginning. I teach 13 and 14 year olds. They are always trying to get away with something. Not all of them, but some of them. So at this time of year to handle a noisy class, I mean, I don't have any, but all I have to do, I might just do this. You know, if one, if one student is talking a little bit too much, but in my class, um, there are times of the class where students can talk with each other about what they're working on. So it's a, Oh yeah. Ibrahim, be careful. The middle finger, that one right there, buddy. If you turn it and have that one, the only one extended, we talked about extended earlier. Yeah, that could be bad. That could be bad. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Pacifists in U.S. history. Yeah, it could be the hippies. Yeah, the hippies of the 1960s. They had long hair, and they did that a lot. Absolutely. Oh, I almost, I wanted to make Miniman this morning for breakfast, but I know I'm going live. So I had a quick granola bar, but I was craving Miniman yesterday. When you want something, usually food, and you really want to eat it, you could say, I'm craving it. Oh, right now I'm craving some Miniman. And I'm going to put onions in mine next time. Going to put onions. Uh, don't don't show the don't show the middle finger. I mean, if you're really mad at someone, I guess you could, but watch out. They might get mad right back. All right, the next one. Serenity or serene. I know there are a couple fans of the TV show Seinfeld, and they had a saying, Serenity now. Serenity now. So if something is serene or if you are experiencing serenity, it's probably pretty peaceful. If you look at this woman in the middle at the bottom, look at her face. I mean, that's peaceful. That's serene. Serene is another way to say peaceful. But if you look at some of these pictures, the woman who is lying on the dock next to the water that looks pretty serene to me i bet she is feeling a lot of serenity so serenity is the noun but you could describe a place as serene see the woman on top she's at the beach a lot of people probably feel pretty serene when they're at the beach And here's one uh, sentence with serene. The area near the river was so serene, he immediately felt at peace. The area near the river was so serene, he immediately felt at peace. All right, let's check the chat. Any questions about... Wait a, wait a second tranquility did you did you see my slide already how did you know that i was going to do tranquility next Fayez, i think is a 
time traveler. Did you go ahead in time, find out the next slide, and then say it before I showed it? Tranquil. Tranquility. Yeah, we'll be talking about that one next out. All right, um, Sarah, I could. I could talk about handout. It's not exactly about peace, but if someone is given a handout, it means they're given something for free. So if um, somebody was waiting at a food bank, at a food bank, we have food banks in the United States. They have free food there for people and they might be given a handout. And that handout could be free food. Be careful. There is a little bit of a negative connotation with handout. Some people see it as a bad thing. Oh, they were given a handout. So, but that's what it means. Something was given for free. Okay, a handout. Yeah, what a coincidence. Hmm. Uh, a coincidence is when two things happen and you didn't expect it. Just happened to it just happened. Um let's see. To th this this week in the United States, some people celebrated St. Patrick's Day. It's where people wear green here in the United States. There are a lot of people whose families have come from Ireland, so they're Irish. They might be Irish American, and you could wear green on St. Patrick's Day. If somebody didn't realize or they didn't remember it was St. Patrick's Day, but they happened to wear green anyway, it would be a coincidence. Like, oh, I forgot. It's St. Patrick's Day. Luckily, I'm wearing green. What a coincidence. So it's so when two things happen, good things. It's a good thing that it happens, but you didn't plan it. So, oh yeah, we all need serenity. Absolutely. Absolutely. Miniman. Oh yeah. Oh, it's so good. Miniman. And it's so simple. Some green peppers, some onions. I know not everybody in Turkey likes onions and their Miniman, but oh, it's so good. Food bank, yes. If that's a new term, there is a food bank in my city. And um, people, if they don't have enough food, they can go there. Some people volunteer to work at the food bank. So we have a new pet duck. Apple the frog, a pet duck? How does that work? Does the duck keep you up at night because he quacks too much? Well, good luck with your duck. What's your duck's name, Apple? What's your duck's name? All right, the next one, let's pull this up. It is tranquility or tranquil. So tranquility is the noun. Tranquil would be the adjective. Somebody could be having a moment of tranquility or they could be feeling tranquil. Do I, I should have, ah, yes. I do have a sentence with tranquil. After the yoga session, a tranquil feeling spread across her body. Again, you are feeling very peaceful. If something is tranquil, you might hear water running in the background. You might be at peace with yourself. You might be meditating. Some people feel very tranquil when they are meditating. Let's check the chat for any questions here. Oh, yeah. Blissful Mommy, can safe haven be used in a similar way to shelter? Yes, yes. Safe haven, um, and we could use this for refugees too. They are fleeing the war, trying to reach safe haven. Absolutely. Shelter, yeah, we could use that as well. Okay, so handout also can be used in class. Thank you. Thank you for that. So if I had papers, 
and I wanted to hand them out to my students, I literally use my hand to pass them out. Yeah, so a handout. And if you notice, I'm sorry, I don't know the Cyrillic language so well. Um, I think that first uh, that first letter is pronounced like an F in English, because I know I know how to read cafe in Russian, but um, a handout in class that is the noun right there. A handout, right there. It's a noun, or you could use it as a phrasal verb. I am handing out papers. Good. All right. The duck's name is gold. All right, Apple. Thanks for sharing that with us. All right. We are at about one hour for this class. So I hope your English has gotten better. I do want to thank Angelo again for the super chat somewhere back there. Very nice of you. Where is it right there? I can't find it. Oh, I can. So again, I, I don't know if Angelo is still here, but I do thank him. I do thank all the channel members. I do thank anyone who has subscribed to the channel. I do thank anyone who has liked the video. Thank you so much. I love doing this. I'm, my son is done with hockey, so I hope I can do this once a week. I have, I'm working on a lesson about things you forget and English verbs, vocabulary terms that we use with books. So next couple weeks, you might see a couple more live English lessons from this channel. Thank you everyone for watching and uh, have a good rest of your Saturday. Maybe it's nighttime where you live, but thanks so much.